So now, this will be our, our second video, sort of a part B video. In the first video, we talked about how the atoms can form an ion by giving or taking electrons to make their valence shell full, right? Either you fill it up by adding more, or you make it empty by giving them away, and there, therefore you have the full ones underneath. So it's kind of the same thing. So now we're going to talk about the formation of an ionic bond which is when two ions will come together. Formation of, whoops, let's spell that right, ionic bonds. Okay, you can kind of tell that already that there's going to be a, you know, a sort of a pattern because you've got these positive ions who, have, who are getting a positive charge by giving away their electrons. And of course, you can't just give an electron away. You've got to give it to someone. You can't just drop it in the street. So you're going to have to meet up with someone else who wants to take electrons to form like a deal or a partnership. So let's consider, as an example, what happens if lithium wants to meet up with fluorine. Okay? So we're going to see what happens when these two atoms sort of combine together. So first we'll draw some pictures, because uh, the pictures are important, because they tell us the real story, right? Often what students do is they memorize the little crisscross method, and they get all the numbers and answers right, but they forget what's actually happening. So we're going to draw the pictures first, because it's important when you, when you do the shortcut that you think about the process, because knowing what's going on is more important than getting the right answer, right? You can get the answer nine, but if it doesn't mean anything to you, it's kind of a useless thing to do. So let's quickly draw a picture of lithium, right? Okay. Uh, and now remember lithium, if you go to your periodic table, which I have right here, lithium is over here. It's a little blurry in the video, but uh, I could make it bigger, but then I have to move the table around. So you can see the atomic number right here is three. And you can see this number, 5.941, will round up to 6. Right? I'm sorry, I can't read that myself. It's 6.941. Look at how bad that is. This number here is 6.941 right there. And it rounds up to 7, right? It kind of becomes 7 when we round it off. So that, again, tells us how to draw uh, this atom. We have uh, 3 photons, 4 neutrons and three electrons like this whoops wow let's slow down a bit here two electrons go here and one goes here right so by now this should be automatic for you if you have to draw these by now you should be able to do that in your sleep right and that's why i got you to practice drawing a few of them before so let's write lithium under here so we remember who it is and the symbol for lithium is li let's write that under there too because we're going to use that as a short form later. Remember, the symbols have to be written precisely as they look on the table, because even though they are the same as our letters, they are not the same as letters in foreign languages, and they don't understand that those are letters. They just look at them as funny, squiggly symbols, and so you have to be careful to draw them very precisely. Okay, and so what's going to happen if lithium over here gets together with fluorine? Well, let's draw a picture of fluorine. She's a bit bigger, if we go to the periodic table, fluorine is way over here, and she's number nine, and I think that's going to round off to about 19 right there, the mass number. So she has 10 neutrons. She's one of the ones that doesn't match. Nine of everything else. So we go back to our picture, and we can write nine protons, 10 neutrons, and then nine electrons, two, right, and seven. And so from these pictures, we can see what each of them wants to do. Let me write fluorine under here. And of course, capital F is her symbol. In the case of lithium, the valence electrons here, he wants to lose one electron and become a plus one ion. Fluorine wants to gain one electron right here and become eight and become a minus one ion. So it's a perfect match, because lithium can simply give its electron to fluorine. 
fluorine gets full, lithium gets full, and everything is wonderful. So what we do is we draw the pictures this way, underneath here. I'll draw them again. Okay. Everybody caught up to me there? Okay. I'll draw them again, but they're going to be slightly different. Here is lithium. And to be honest, we don't really need to worry about what's inside the nucleus anymore. So to, just for a shortcut, I won't worry about the protons and the neutrons, because you notice they're not involved, right? Bonding is all about electrons. So they don't change their numbers, the protons and neutrons. If they did, it would be serious, because that's the nucleus. And if those things get messed around, you'd have a nuclear reaction. That's how we blow up major cities with giant bombs. We get nuclei to react instead of just electrons. We don't want to do that, not today. So lithium would look like this, too. But see, it's given away. The one electron that was here has been given away. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw fluorine over here. And she has two. And now she's going to have eight because that one electron from here went over there see that's the difference now you know what i i am going to write the the protons in well what the heck just because uh it helps to see in the picture so i'm going to put three protons here and uh, four neutrons and over here what did we say we she had uh, nine protons and 10 neutrons, just to show you uh, how we keep track of the pluses and minuses, right? So what happened is, by, for lithium over here, lithium, I'll put his name here, Li, he's lost an electron, right? And so what we do is we put big brackets around his picture, and we show the difference between his pluses and minuses. He has uh, two minuses and three pluses, so that means he's a plus one ion. That's the same as the number on the periodic table for his column, right? He's column one, the plus one column. And we don't write the one. That's just the way we do it. And over here on the other side, we see that fluorine, if I write her name here too, just so we have everybody identified. Now, what happens, of course, is the name changes, right? Remember we talked about that? We were talking about using the example of them getting married and how you know the girl changes her name to the boy's name traditionally in, in you know many cultures. Uh, so we call this now fluoride. So what I should do is I should write over here lithium ion to show the difference, and I'm going to write fluoride ion over here. Right? We'll put the ion word in too. That's important. And this is still the symbol F. Okay, but it looks different because we we'll put the brackets around it. And we'll look at the pluses and minuses. It now has 10 up there on the electron side, 10 not minuses. And it has nine pluses. So that's a minus ion. And so if we're drawing a Bohr-Rutherford diagram of an ion, we have to put the brackets and show the difference in the charge, because that identifies that it has either gained or lost one of its electrons or some of its electrons. OK? And so what will happen is now, because these two have formed very strong plus and minus, that plus and minus form a strong attraction between the two ions that holds them together. They're stuck together because the giving of that electron made them charged, turned them into ions, and now opposites attract. And they are held together by the force that holds opposite charges together. It's called the electric or the electromagnetic force and it holds these things together. So now we call them a compound. You know how in English you have a simple word like sum and another word like thing, but you can put them together and make a compound word, something? This is a compound that's going to be made of lithium and fluorine. And so what we do, once they're all joined together, we describe them very simply as lithium, Fluoride, L-I-F, and we call it lithium fluoride. Lithium fluoride. 
And this is an example of what we call an ionic compound. And sometimes we just say compound for short. An ionic compound is the joining of two things by an ionic bond. We call this bond in between them an ionic bond. And the ionic bond forms because they've given their electrons and become charged, turned into ions, and now they're stuck together. So we can summarize this without pictures. We have a sort of a way of doing it simpler, right? Without all these crazy pictures, we can do a summary of this like this. We can say that lithium plus fluorine will produce or yield, that's the old word in chemistry, the, the arrow, it means it yields, which means to it produces or, or, or turns into or, or gives us, right? Uh, they produce lithium fluoride, like this. Now, what you'll notice is that they was a negative one charge and a positive one charge, right? And so they sort of they sort of balance nicely, one of each. And so when we do this this little this little thing here, it's nice and simple. But what would happen if we had lithium wanting to join a different atom, like, say, nitrogen, who does not form a minus one atom. Then we'd have to have different numbers of atoms to make it all work. So that's an easy one. Let's now examine, as a second example, what would happen if lithium were to join with, say, nitrogen. And this time, we're not going to draw the pictures. We're going to rely on what we've learned. We already know what kind of atom lithium produces. We already drew that picture up above. And we can look on our periodic table. He's in the first column, the plus one column. We know that he will form a plus one ion. So we can shortcut by putting a little plus one right there. We don't show the one. Remember, that's still the number one. And we can look at our periodic table and say, what kind of ion does nitrogen form? Well, she's in the column of 3 minus. And that's because she has 5. She needs to get 3 electrons. Right? She needs to get 3 electrons in order to be full, which would give her a minus 3. So we can just shortcut by putting the 3 minus right there. And then, of course, we can figure out what we would put over here if we think about how they would match up. And to help you think about how they would match up, I will draw the pictures underneath, right? Even though we have those numbers. And then I'll show you the final crisscross shortcut. So remember, here's lithium with his two and one electrons, like that. And here's nitrogen over here with her two and five. So it's obvious that one lithium atom could only give one electron to this nitrogen, and that would not be enough, because she's looking for three. But if there were other lithium atoms around, let's say there's another one here, two and one, he could give his electron to her as well. That would be two. We need one more, and so there would have to be one more lithium atom floating around, and we would need three of them in order to give enough electrons to turn this into eight and make nitrogen happy. So we can see from the pictures that we need a ratio. It's not just one and one anymore. We need three lithiums to go with one nitrogen to make it work. And so that means we would have to write L, I, 3. Remember in grade 9, that's what that means. When you put a little 3 dangling after the symbol, that means you're talking about three of them. So L, I, 3 goes with an N and makes lithium nitride. Okay. So that means we could, we could figure out this by drawing the pictures or by looking over here at the blue numbers that we have already got. And it turns out, if I take this number three that's up here, and I just imagine it jumping down here, so see, there it is, next to the lithium. 
and I take the, the one that we imagine there, and I bring it over here. Well, there's a one here, but we just don't show it. I can, I can turn this on the left side into what's on the right side by just crisscrossing those numbers down. So it's a simple shortcut than having to draw all the pictures. And of course, we don't, we don't put the charge, the plus or the minus doesn't go with it, just the number. So remember, if it, and, and of course, we don't write the one. So uh, the one that's here, one's kind of weird. It goes down, but we just put it there in our mind and we don't actually write one here. So the, what we write is just simply Li3 N. The N there stands for one because it's obviously one N. It's right there. And that's how we get the, what we call the, the formula, right? The formula for this joining up or this matching. And that's called lithium nitride. But it's really a nitride ion who has gained three electrons that were given from three lithium ions who gave their electrons. And that's the process. Now there's one more thing. The, the little shortcut that I just showed you up here, crisscrossing the numbers, works almost every time. But there's a small glitch. Okay? And that is when you have this situation. Let me just draw a line here. And let's just look at the situation where we have, say, uh, let's pick beryllium and oxygen. So beryllium, if you look on your table, he's number uh, four, right? Now let's go to our table here so you can see him. Here he is, right next to, to lithium. He's number four. And uh, if I recall, let me just clear this ink off here for a second. Yeah, so he's got five neutrons. See, there's his four, and this is rounding off to nine, so he's got five neutrons. So let's go over here and put four protons, five neutrons. Two electrons, two electrons. Okay. That's beryllium. Now what we're trying to do here is see what happens if beryllium is going to join with, say, somebody like oxygen. So let's put oxygen over here with its eight protons, eight neutrons, and its two and six. Uh, actually, you know what? Well, I guess that'll work. Two and six. Six electrons. Okay, good. So that's oxygen. Now, it's pretty clear to see that if the two electrons here jump over to there, this will turn into eight, this will disappear, and everybody will be happy, right? And it's clear to see that all you need is one beryllium atom and one oxygen atom to make this work. But if you do the shortcut like this, and you write beryllium plus oxygen, and you look on your periodic table, you will see that beryllium is the 2 plus, and oxygen is the 2 minus. And if you follow the rule and you cross those numbers down, you will write Be2O2, which is telling you that you need two beryllium atoms and two oxygen atoms to make this party work. But we know that's not true, because we just did the picture, and really one and one is fine. And so what that means is we have to look carefully after we do our crisscross at the two numbers, and we have to sort of think about lowest terms, the lowest possible ratio. This is actually what we would call a one-to-one -one ratio, isn't it? So the real answer is beryllium one oxygen one. This is how they join. We saw it in the pictures up above here. They don't join as four. They join one and one. So when you do the crisscross, you have to look at your numbers, and if they can be reduced to the lowest ratio, you have to do that. So remember how you do that. If you have the numbers two and four, right? Well, what is that ratio? Right? One half, right? Two and four is the same as one half. If you have two of four pieces of pi, then you have one half the pi, right? Okay, we just moved it up so people could see what, it was, what we had written. 
Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so the ratio 2 to 4 is the same as 1 to 2. So let's say you did an example where you were trying to cross uh, beryllium again with carbon. Well, what you would do is, uh, well, let me write that over here. Let's forget that, so we have room. Let's do beryllium and carbon. You would look on the periodic table, and you would find that beryllium is in the 2 plus column. Carbon is the plus or minus 4. In this case, he'd have to be minus if he's going to go with a plus, right? So he would be minus 4 in this case, 4 minus. And when you did the little crossing of the numbers, you put the 4 down there and the 3 down there, the answer you might write is BE4C2. But that can be reduced. If you look at the numbers 4 compared to 2, that's the same as 2 compared to 1, isn't it? It's the same ratio. We reduce it to lowest terms. So in a sense, what we're doing is dividing those two numbers by two. And the real answer, you would have to correct it to be BE2 and C1. Right? The four divided by two is two. Two divided by one is one. Or two divided by two is one, I mean. And so sometimes you will get answers from the crisscross that can be reduced to a lower ratio. And as you saw from the picture, the lower ratio is the one that's correct, right, up here. We drew it and we saw that that's actually true. The blue one we got here is incorrect. We don't need four different atoms to make this work. We only need the two of them in this case. Over here, we don't need a total of six atoms to make this work. We only really need three. We need two beryllium's and one carbon. And you can think that in your head. Each beryllium is giving two electrons, right? And carbon wants four. So all you need is two beryllium's, two and two is four. So you have to watch for that little bit of a trick when you're doing your crisscross. Okay, and so that's how we do it. So I'll just do a couple of quick examples just to show you how it works. And then, uh, of course, you've already started your little exercise on this. So uh, let's do um, uh, calcium plus uh, sulfur and see what happens. So we look on the periodic table. We find calcium right here. That's in the 2 plus column. So that means calcium forms a 2 plus ion. So I write 2 plus above calcium here. That's how I get that number. And I remember what that means. It means that calcium wants to give away two electrons in his outer valence orbital in order to be full. Okay, then I go back over here and I see sulfur. So sulfur is right over here, right under oxygen, this column. Well, we know from oxygen's picture, that's the two minus column, right? Two minus column. Okay, so I go back over here, whoops, and I put the two minus here. And then all I do is take the numbers, whatever they are, and cross them down like that. So I write calcium, now in this case, they both twos, like that. And then I check for my, my lowest term ratio, which here would apply, right? I really don't need four atoms. What I really need is, what this is showing, the two and two, is that it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So the real answer I should write is CAS, one of each, and I would call it calcium sulfide. And that's it. Okay, so this is technically not the right answer, right? You want to write it like that. So what I would do, if I was writing this on a test, I wouldn't even write this part up here. I would think about the twos going down, and as I'm crossing them, I would say, oh, wait a minute, those are one-to-one -one ratio. And I would just write, I would write it like this, calcium plus sulfur, right? And I would put my two plus here and my two minus there. Then I would cross them, and then I would realize the ratio in my head and I would write calcium sulfide like this. Right? You don't have to write the incorrect one and then cross it out and write the right one. You'll, get, you'll be able to do it in your head after a while, right? And that's the answer. And if you have to write the name, you would write calcium sulfide. And that's all there is to it. That's the simple way of doing uh, ionic bonds. And remember, these are called ionic compounds. Another name for them is salts. But we're going to do another video shortly after we take another break uh, about some of the properties of these things, and we'll talk about all that later. All right, that's the end of that.